Hey everybody, Dave Blair here with DCS Training, and I'm here to provide you with some free, easy stuff. So this is our first video for all you newcomers. First thing I want to talk about is firearm safety. Now this is general firearm safety. This is the five basic firearm safety rules, and I'll make this just as fast as I possibly can. All right, rule number one is treat all firearms as if they're loaded. Now there are times when firearms are loaded and times when firearms are not loaded. We definitely need to know when which is what. Okay, later on when you start taking more advanced classes, there are times when it's going to be unloaded and you need to know that so you can reload and continue doing whatever it is you're doing. However, rule number one is most important in my opinion, one of the most important in my opinion, because it has to do with your turning this on. Okay, before you ever start handling that firearm, you want to tell yourself, I'm going to treat this as if it's loaded. Now, when you're out in general public, this is really important because people are observant. Uh, we in the gun community, uh, we analyze and grade everybody we see when we go to a gun store, shooting range, uh, gun show, anywhere where there's, you're handling a firearm, we are observing what you're doing with that firearm. And if you're not following all five of these rules the entire time, you make us nervous, okay? Because we naturally assume that you don't know these rules based on your performance. So I don't care if you've been handling firearms for five minutes, you've been handling it for 20 years. Firearms community, the only thing we care about is that you're following these five rules at all times. So if you're not treating it like it's loaded all the time, it makes us nervous, okay? So turn on the brain box. When you go to a store or something, naturally the first thing that the sales associate does is he grabs that firearm out from underneath the counter and he's going to activate the magazine release, remove the magazine from the firearm. He's going to lift up on the slide lock when he pulls the slide to the rear to lock it open he's going to physically and visually inspect the chamber area to make sure that it's not loaded he's going to look inside the magazine well to make sure it's not loaded and then and only then will we put this back together again and hand it to you so what do you do i don't trust him i'm going to remove the magazine i'm going to lock the slide to the rear i'm going to physically and visually inspect it all over again to ensure that it is in fact unloaded Okay, which brings us to rule number two. While I'm handling this, I want to make sure that the muzzle, which is on this end, is pointed in a safe direction at all times. What is a safe direction? In a gun store, you may not have a safe direction, but it's definitely not at other people. Uh, it's not at the ground, it's not at the ceiling. So if you're not sure where a safe direction is, ask the sales associate, you know, where can I point this while I look at it? He's probably going to point to the wall behind him. So ask him to scoot out of the way, and now you can look at your sights and and fiddle around with things, okay? A safe direction for me, and especially in all my classes, is defined as an area designed to capture your projectile, okay? Now, we don't always have that. At a range, you have a backstop. It's designed to capture your projectile. Whether it's an indoor range or an outdoor range, it is designed to capture it. So what about when you're at home? Then we have to pick the safest direction, all right? It, bullet traps are relatively inexpensive. You can go to anywhere and look online you can find them for 150 to 250 dollars it'd be a good idea to invest in one of those uh, for those of you who are budget conscious you can go to the store and get a, a bucket a five gallon bucket fill full of play sand you'll be out 10 bucks but the firearm has to be pointed straight down in the bucket when you're unloading and showing that it's empty for any reason if you have any mechanical malfunction or you're negligent with your trigger discipline and the gun goes off for any reason you're going to capture it in that bucket Okay, it'll capture most projectiles within four to six inches. Okay, if you're holding that fireman at an angle on top of that bucket, it can ricochet, bounce off, come out, and injure or damage something. Okay, your wall, your ceiling, your floor are not safe directions in your home, which is why I said when you're in a gun store, sales associates already checked it, you should have checked it, and now, of course, we can ask where is the safe direction. I mean, maybe when you're checking it, you should ask them before you check it so that you can keep it pointed in that direction while you check it, okay? So very, very important. Gun shows, uh, again, safest direction. So, you know, there's not a lot of safest directions in a gun show, okay? If, uh, so, again, it's about just respecting this before you start handling it, okay? Choose the very best option if you don't know. Ask whoever's around you, okay? So rule number one, treat all guns as if they're loaded. Rule number two, keep it pointed in a safe direction or safest direction. Rule number three, this is most important for me as an instructor when I'm on the firing line, that you're keeping your finger off the trigger, okay? Now what this means is, is that you're picking the firearm up with a full firearm, firearm grip, okay?
okay? When it's coming in and out of your holster, when it's coming in and out of your case, uh, you have your finger not just above the frame, but actually on the slide. This helps in future classes so that you can also kind of chamber check with that finger. But most importantly is we don't want it to accidentally slip in place. So if you have your finger here or if you have your finger here, yes, it's out of the trigger guard. But for me, when I'm watching the entire line, I'm looking for a high indication. It takes just as much time to get from here to here as it does from here to here. It really does. Okay. So I'll just leave it at that. This is where I prefer to see it because it's definitely out of the trigger guard. Okay. Our primary concern is if I'm grabbing with this hand, whether it's to open a doorknob, a car door, I'm pushing somebody out of the way, I'm grabbing a family member. If I'm grabbing with this hand, we have what's called a sympathetic reflex. I will grab with the other hand too. This is scientifically proven. You can look it up on YouTube about that specific thing and all the cases and videos that are out there that show somebody grabbing with one hand, discharging their gun with the other. Okay? That's what we're trying to avoid. When you start having an improper grip and you start fondling the firearm like this. Well, look where my middle finger lands, okay? So this is not maintaining control of the firearm. You have to have the proper grip when you pick this up. And the same can be said with your rifles. When you're picking that rifle up, you want to make sure you're maintaining a proper grip, that your finger is well out of the trigger guard for the same reason. So I don't like a lot of hand switching, etc. If you do switch hands with the firearm, you want to go left to your right, you're switching the grip with it. So now I have a full firing grip with the left hand, okay? Anything I need to do now happens with my support hand. And when and if I need two hands, I need to set this down and do it with those two hands. So I hope I make that pretty clear. Rule number three, keep your finger off the trigger. When are you finally allowed to touch the trigger? When your sights are on your target, okay? When your sights are on your target. So I've identified my target, I've identified what it is I'm going to be shooting at, and only then do I get to touch my trigger. So if I want to inspect or look at my target when I'm done shooting, finger comes up here first, and then we can retract back, look at what it is that's going on. When I decide to shoot again, I'm going to point, line up those sights, and I'm going to engage my trigger. So anytime I'm at rest or anytime I'm not actively shooting, that finger does not belong anywhere near that trigger guard, okay? It requires a conscious decision to shoot, okay? When you're touching that trigger, you are consciously deciding to send projectiles in that direction, okay? So this brings us to rule number four, knowing your target, what's around it, what's beyond it. So even in competitive shooting, when they tell you to drop your slide and, and release your hammer, you should still get a full firing grip, look down range before you press that trigger. You shouldn't just get in the habit of doing it from here. That's a very bad habit. Just a personal opinion, but that is a, a my personal opinion, okay? So knowing your target, what's around it. Even though you have drawn down, you decided, okay, this dead person definitely, or this target definitely, well, I want to put a hole in it. People could be running around, moving around. The, the target could have changed. Uh, the person may have dropped their weapon, whatever. And so be prepared for all that, okay? We're only touching the trigger when we know our target and we've made a conscious decision to shoot. So four kind of ties in with number three. Rule number five is keep your firearms secure. So you have to know where they are at all times and who has access to them. So you wanna make sure they stay locked up and secured. This is for you to decide on how much access you want folks to have for your family, okay? This is an individual rule, all right? When you're using it for home protection, there's nothing wrong with keeping it loaded around in a chamber provided that you control who has access to it. That's for you to decide how you wanna control that access, okay? I won't go into a deep lecture on that one. Now, those are the five basic firearm safety rules, okay? Short, simple, sweet to the point. Everybody should know them. Everyone should practice them. Some things for you to consider is training your children early, okay? You start telling them about knives being sharp and ovens being hot by age three, so you should start teaching them stop, don't touch, tell an adult as soon as possible. By age three, five, they can understand that. How do we teach them a stove's hot? We put her hand there, something hot, because they don't understand hot. How do we teach them that a knife is sharp? Because they don't understand sharp. You get out a little carrot on a cutting board and you start chopping it up and you explain to them that could be their finger. Little bells and whistles go off. All right, mom, dad, I'm never touching that knife. Okay, that's how they understand what sharp is, what hot is. So how do they understand that guns are dangerous? It's not a bad idea to take them to a shooting range, make sure they have proper hearing and eye protection, let them hear the sound of the firearm. That's enough to, to 
make them respected, okay? Uh, as far as teaching your children, the earliest I started teaching my kids was around age five. Uh, the, just the basic firearm safety rules. We practice all the loading and unloading and stuff with firearms that fit them, that were their size. Uh, typically a bolt action rifle because it gives them five points of contact and only shoots one bullet at a time, then it's unloaded. Practice all that at home, dry fire first, so that when they go to the range, you're not trying to teach them with all the distractions and stuff that are going on. It is my opinion that the firearm, regardless if it's an adult or a child, should fit them. So if you're trying to hand an adult-sized firearm to a child, it's going to be more complicated and more difficult for them to learn on. Okay, We, we as humans have habits of wanting to hang on tighter when something's jumping and moving out of our hands. Okay, um, So I would, I'll do a separate video on teaching youth later, but I, children should know at an early age. They should also know not to go to school and tell all their friends, okay, because we can't control that information. So that's something for you to talk about with your spouse and your kids about how you want to handle that. But the rule in my house has always been we don't talk about guns, you know, outside of our family. So that's a good rule to have. Very last one I want to post to you, and you guys can add as many rules as you want to your family firearm safety stuff. Well, one of the big rules I have with our, our family is my guns belong to me and your guns belong to you. So my kids have guns, my wife has guns, I have guns, and we don't share. Except for maybe when we're at the range. And the reason for that is because I prefer to keep mine loaded around the chamber ready to go. My wife, on the other hand, might keep hers loaded, no round in the chamber, ready to go. Okay, and all my, my kids are locked in a storage case, nothing loaded, ammunition separate, uh, etc. Okay, and the reason for that is, is so that if I go to my case or cabinet, it's still left in the condition I left it in. My wife hasn't set me up for failure. Hers are still in her cabinet where she keeps it, and I haven't fiddled with it, so it's left how she expects to find it. And the same goes for what's in our big cabinet that may belong to the kids or may belong to me. So we know when we go to those cabinets the condition of the firearm and that it has not been changed. Super, super important for self-defense. So, All right, so real quick, just a caveat, wrap this up because I want to keep it really short. Five basic firearm safety rules. These are international, this is everywhere. Rule number one, treat all guns as if they're loaded, okay? Rule number two, keep it pointed in a safe direction. You are responsible for what the safe direction is. Rule number three, keep your finger off the trigger and probably up on the slide until your sights are on target and you made a conscious decision to shoot. Number four, know your target, what's beyond it, what's around it, be prepared for those conditions to change. Rule number five, keep them secure. Okay, you're responsible for who has access to your stuff. So thank you very much for joining us. Those are the five very basic firearm safety rules. Uh, take care. Good luck.